my uh, second cooking stream. And I've got a, uh, well, a tasty seasonal dish for you. So it's fall here in America. So uh, the dish I've got for you is an apple cardamom chicken over rice pilaf. So let me show you a little bit about um, the ingredients. I mean, as I haul my stand over here. So we've got um, raisins, pine nuts. We've got four chicken legs that I've let come down to room temperature. Um, cardamom, which will be a key part of the seasoning. Saffron for the pilaf. Olive oil, chicken broth, and apple cider. Um, oh, yep, yeah, onion and salt. So about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. About 10 or 11 ingredients. Again, it's a fairly simple dish. Um, but I think you'll find that it's going to be very easy for you to replicate at home. Uh, when I upload this to YouTube, I'll have the recipe and the ingredients and the whole guide um, for you to follow along. But for now, let's jump right into it. Um, the first thing you want to do is you're going to want to preheat your oven to 450, which I've already done because it takes a while. Um, you're going to want to get a heavy baking sheet, baking pan. Uh, I like to use parchment paper so things don't stick. And next thing you're going to do is going to place the chicken into the... Yeah, you should probably get a closer view of this. The chicken onto the roasting pan. The baking sheet really but it acts as a roasting pan so i orient it kind of like this to maximize the space again small kitchen all right and maybe i should just tilt it up like this yeah okay now I just gotta wash my hands because I don't want to cross contaminate. Next, we gotta drizzle it with olive oil. Come on. There we go. You don't wanna put too much. Maybe like. Now it's probably like a, a tablespoon and a half worth of olive oil. Again, just enough to lightly coat the chicken. And again, wash hands. <laughs> All right, so for the next part, we're gonna season the chicken. So what I like to do is I'll take a little bowl where I can put my components in. So let's start with uh, the black pepper. I'll take about a teaspoon worth. No, you can't see in the camera. Kind of awkward. Watch it spill. Okay. Teaspoon of black pepper. A teaspoon of salt. There's gonna be some sweetness to this, so having the salt helps add a little bit of contrast and at the same time balance the flavor profile. And then finally, cardamom. Cardamom, along with uh, cinnamon, is a spice I generally associate with apples, and um, we're gonna have some cider. I'm going to reduce to form a sauce. Well, hopefully it's more of a glaze than a sauce, but we'll see how it looks at the end. Okay, so I blended the three spices, well, three seasonings, salt, black pepper, and cardamom into this one little uh, mixing bowl here. And what we're going to do, let's see if I can get the camera down. 
Now, I like to do like a, a kind of a manual season from up high. Let the let the seasonings kind of fall. Because you want a nice even distribution for the flavor. And that is going to go all over the, the top side of this chicken. I mean, really, the, the, the hope is that it gets nice golden brown at the end of uh, the roast. A little bit here, a little bit over there. So as you can see, it's starting to look like it's properly seasoned. Nothing worse than the unseasoned food. I'm not a big fan of like, um, I know some some regional cuisines actually have blandish food just because like they're, they're from an area where there isn't much in the way of seasoning in their cuisine but me i like to season my food sorry for crossing over so here's a here's a fun little thing i'm going to do because i want a nice crispy skin on the chicken i'll take a tablespoon of butter Okay, that's a generous one tablespoon of butter. Split it into four pieces. And I'll put it on top. So this will start to drizzle down as it cooks. Okay, and that's the initial step. Now, I'm going to pull, pull the camera back because I'm going to put this in the oven. I don't want to, you know, get in trouble. <laughs> okay, so. And this goes in the oven for half an hour. Again, I preheated the oven to 450 degrees. And now we're going to work on our next component. Um, so, again, we're going to do an apple cider glaze. Or, well, it's a, according to the recipe I'm using, um, it's more of a sauce. But I prefer uh, a little bit of a thicker coating on the chicken. Also, the recipe I'm using calls for apple juice, but I prefer cider. Why? Because it's already got um, some spices to it and um, it just smells, it's just fresher to me. So what do you have here? A quarter cup. I'm just going to put it in a small saucepan. Yeah, quarter cup. You see the measurement. Put in a small saucepan. I'm going to set it on the back uh, burner here. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let it get to a boiling point and then uh, get it down to a simmer. I want it to just evaporate a bit more and that's what'll make it thicken into more of a glaze than a sauce. But that's the intention anyway. Let's see if that's what works. Let's see if that's what happens. Okay. Let me get this out of the way. So the way I like to cook is um, as soon as I use up the components that I'm using, I try to clear away because again, this is such a small kitchen. So another thing I like to do is, as you saw, I uh, uh, used the one side already for um, 
holding the chicken. So I don't want to cross contaminate, so I'm going to replace this cutting board with another one. All right. Now the next thing I'm going to do is uh, get stuff ready for the rice pilaf. So while the chicken is cooking and while, well, really baking, and while the sauce, the glaze is going to start to reduce after it starts to boil a bit more. So awkward going off screen for this. So anyway, got to get the uh, knife all honed. I'm going to show you how I get my onion minced. Oh, all right, so this, it's already starting to sizzle here. So I'm going to bring this down to a simmer, bring it all the way down to low. So it'll slowly evaporate. I don't want everything to burn off too quick. So anyway, I only need half of this onion. The peel is out of the way. I like to save my peels for um, making vegetable stock or really any soup stock. And I'm going to do a short video on YouTube about uh, how to make basic stock. It's so easy to do. I'm surprised more people don't do it. And not only is it sustainable because you're, you're reusing ingredients, but it ends up being cheaper because like no matter how much money you spend on your vegetables, if you're going to just reuse them for stock, it's like you used them twice. So whatever you paid is like half off because you're using it two times. So anyway, here's how I mince my onion. Do a couple horizontal cuts. Then um, some cuts along the length of the onion. So basically I'm trying to form like a grid pattern. So there's horizontal, then vertical, and then you just cut downwards. So uh, as you can see, they come out in like little cubes. Again, kind of a uniform mincing cutting method. I know you see some chefs and they're like super fast, but since I'm on stream, I want to be careful and, you know, try not to cut myself while I'm live. That would not be a good thing. Okay, so we've got um, half a medium onion minced. So I'll take... Um, a large saucepan, like so. Um, I eyeball about a, ta a tablespoon and a half of olive oil. A little bit more. So yeah, just enough to kind of coat the bottom. Okay. Let's start off at medium heat. This is where we'll put the uh, onions. Got some stray peels in here. So I'll make sure not to put that in. Anyway, put the rest of it straight in. This will start to get aromatic as it cooks. I like to use like a wooden spoon or a spatula to stir things in, so make sure the onion is the onions are fully well coated by the olive oil.
Yep. Let me get back in frame here. <laughs> okay. So you're going to want to let this cook maybe five or so minutes to let it kind of get translucent and soften. Another thing I like to do is um, a little bit of salt over it. The salt will help draw out the, the natural liquid in the onion. So it retains a lot of water. It will bring the, the liquid out of it and uh, Help it cook a little bit better, bring out a little bit of the flavor. Alright, I'm gonna put, but yeah, I can't talk. <laughs> I'm gonna bring the temperature back down to low while I bring the camera up. Okay. So, for this recipe you need one and a half cups of long grain rice. I like to use basmati rice. So, for those that don't know, pilaf um, is derived, well, I'm not sure if it's the original word, but it, it's derived from... Um, Similar words, uh, and you might recognize things like plov if you're from Eastern Europe or Russia, or pulau. Um, it's the same meaning in those languages. Basically, it's a way of cooking rice so that it's not sticky. If you're familiar with like a lot of Southeast Asian and East Asian rice dishes, their rice is very sticky. Which, you know, which aids in being able to use chopsticks to, to pick up the food. Okay. Mm, I love the smell of like cooked onion and garlic. Well, I don't have garlic today, but I love the smell of cooked onion. So, um... Because it's a pilaf and we don't want it sticky, you want to be able to um, uh, rinse. So I'm going to step behind the camera. So yeah, rinsing the uh, rinsing the rice, you know, washes out the. Um, The gluten which is what makes it sticky now that that's been done you can pour the rice into the, the pot straight just drop it in Ooh, I can smell the chicken in the oven it's amazing okay you gotta want to stir it around Let me bring this closer. All right, so you're gonna to want to stir it around again, so you get you get the the rice and the onion cooked, uh, not cooked, but soaked thoroughly in the olive oil. You want the uh, seasoning, the seasoning, the flavor to come through on all all the components as usual. The other thing I like to do is uh, put the remaining seasoning from the chicken, throw it in, not all of it, maybe like a teaspoon's worth. This provides consistency to the flavor for the dish throughout. coated 
Now, the next thing we'll do is add the other components to the dish. So I like a little bit of sweetness in my savory foods. So I'll take a quarter cup, if I can find my quarter cup measure. This is really a third of a cup, but it's okay. Like I said, I like it a little sweeter. Now you can't see. There you go. So the raisins, so again, will go into the saucepan. This also provides a little bit of moisture um, as the um, as the dish gets cooked. Now, the reason why I like to use pine nuts isn't just for the flavoring. I like the texture. It'll give it a little, you know, nice little crunch or crispiness to the dish. I'll just do like a handful. So again, we got the earthiness of the nuts. You got the uh, sweetness of the raisins. Um, and then the savoriness of the onion cooked in olive oil. So this is already going to have quite a depth of flavor. What more? Well, if you recall earlier, I had some yellow saffron powder. I got this when I went to Cambodia. So um, I went to Siem Reap to go see Angkor Wat, this giant temple city. I figured while I was there, I should try some of their food. And I was like, wait, you sell saffron here? It's so cheap. If you try to buy saffron at the store, it's so much more expensive. But I went all the way to Cambodia. And I was like, all right, I'm going to take advantage of this deal. So I take one teaspoon and just sprinkle it all over. This will give it a nice, hopefully bright yellow uh, you know, color at the end of cooking. If you don't have saffron powder, that's fine. You can use turmeric instead. I think turmeric is a little healthier anyway. Um, but um, saffron doesn't impart too much of a flavor the way turmeric does. You kind of want to, um, you know, see what works best for you. Yeah, right, let's do a close-up of this saucepan. Mm -hmm. See, nice and yellow with the raisins and the nuts and the onions. Okay, everything should be thoroughly coated in the olive oil as well so they all cook evenly and properly. Next part is, well, so you need to cook the rice in a liquid. I like to use chicken broth. Normally I make my own, but I didn't have chicken broth available to me. So, um, cause I hadn't cooked chicken in a while. I normally save all the bones and stuff. So I'm just going to make do with, um, store bought low sodium chicken broth. You need about two and a half cups. So here's the first cup going down. I should have showed this to the camera. I'm gonna get a center to shot. There you go. Here's the second cup. cups of low sodium chicken broth. Now you're gonna wanna as soon as you open it you gotta refrigerate it so it doesn't go bad. So I just put that back in the fridge. Put 
Okay, now I'm going to let this go up to a boil, but here, let me show, show you what it looks like now. So it looks kind of soupy, right? Because you've got all the, the liquid with the grains. Alright, so we're going to let that come to a boil. minutes until the chicken comes out. Um, the apple cider is reducing back there and then here we've got um, the rice. So I'm gonna let that, when it comes to a boil, when it comes to a boil I'll cover it and then set it down to a simmer so it starts to cook away the liquid. So yeah at this point it's just uh, kind of like waiting for stuff to cook. Mm, I'm smelling that chicken. I wish we had smell a vision so you could smell uh, the food as, it, as it's being cooked here. But yeah, I've got the chicken ready to come out in just under eight minutes. The cider is slowly cooking off. And this, again, it's just taking a while to come to boil. Again, it's just packed with stuff, so I'm not surprised. Ooh. I don't know if you can hear that, but uh, the sizzle. I just love the sound of sizzling food. It tells me that something good's coming coming out of the oven soon. All right, this is starting to bubble. Cover. So this should cook for about 20 more minutes, uh, but this is coming out in about seven. So when the chicken comes out, I'm gonna set the timer for 13 minutes here. But I really, I, I enjoy cooking, and I want people who come to my channel to see that I enjoy cooking. Um, but sometimes getting distracted with, like, you know, jiggling around the camera, or uh, just having the inability to zoom in and out can be a little, just can be a little much. But, uh, again, this is fun for me. So, hopefully it's fun for you as a viewer. And um, I think the point that I'm trying to get across in doing these cooking streams is uh, I notice that a lot of people that I know don't really cook a lot. You know, bit, maybe it's because it's a busy New York City life, no one likes to cook, but I'm, I'm not that far from New York. Uh, I enjoy cooking and the flavors may sound complex, but they're, it's really easy to pull off and hopefully people can see that and see that, hey, I can do this too. All right. So, moment of truth. Is it ready or do I have to put it back in for like 10 more minutes? Let's see. Well, that's a terrible angle, so let's bring it closer. Look at that. Nice golden sear. Uh, nice coloring on top. That's the way I like my chicken. Nice golden brown. So I'm going to let the, let the chicken rest a little bit. There we go. So the timer is now set for 13 minutes. Originally the rice was supposed to cook for 20. So I took into account that um, something was already running 7 minutes into it. Pulled it out. Now this is going for 13 more minutes. It looks like it's cooking just right on pace so far. But yeah, with the chicken, so with when you're, when you're baking something, as I'm sure you have realized, when you bake... Um, bake or roast apply heat to meat um, the heat forces the liquids to the center right and so if I just cut into the chicken right now um, it's gonna be a little dry because all the liquids are in the middle so I'm gonna let the meat rest let the juice redistribute and um, see how it goes from there 
Meanwhile, this the apple, the um, the apple, the apple cider continues to cook down. Here, let me bring it closer to. Do you hear that? Do you hear that sizzling? <laughs> I mean, it's juicy. Okay, there's the rice peel off. And there's the cider still plugging away. All right. So this is a this is a three component dish. We had uh, the chicken just come out of the oven, which is seasoned in salt, pepper, and cardamom. Um, I'm reducing the apple cider over there in the back um, so that I can brush it over as a glaze. And then I've got the rice pilaf here that's cooking down. Um, it's basmati rice, pine nuts, raisins, onions, all cooked in the um, chicken broth. So it shouldn't be sticky, but should hopefully have the kind of like savoriness that you're looking for when you cook something in chicken broth. Uh, while also having the sweetness of the onion and the crunch of the pine nuts. I mean, so far so good. I mean, really, at this point, it's just waiting for the uh, the rice peel off, the rice peel off to cook, and then I'll show you how I assemble the dish. Yeah, let's check it out. So I want to try to zoom in on the chicken here. So as you can see, it's you got that nice little like crispy top, well seasoned. We've got the uh, the rice peel off. It looks like it's cooking well. The liquid is absorbing, and certainly the cider over in the back it's coming down. It was a quarter cup of apple cider, but I'm dropping it to probably half that to make it thicken the uh, a thickened kind of sweet glaze. I'm getting impatient. Let's check it out. Ooh, the smell is amazing. But yeah, I think it's worth waiting another three minutes for this. And I'll show you what it looks like. I wish I could have you guys smell this thing because just the aromatics. I think I may have underestimated the saffron. It smells amazing. The raisins, the um, the pine nuts, the chicken broth, the onions, it all combines really well. And as soon as I opened that lid, whew, I got hungry all of a sudden. I if you can see all that steam come out. Anyway, let's bring let's bring you guys closer. Not, not that awkward closeness, but hey. And that nice bright yellow. Mm-hmm. I'll stir it up a bit. Get some more steam out of here. It's always important. Every chef should taste their dish for doneness. So what I'm looking for is for the rice to be soft. Mmm. The flavors really do balance out. Again, you got definitely got the sweetness from the raisin. The um the nuts get that crunchiness to it, and then the rice really absorbed the chicken broth, so there's that nice savory component to it. I like it a lot. Okay, so. Let's start to put things together. So 
So see this dish over here? That uh, that will be what we will assemble. And put this lid over here. So I like to make. Oh. <laughs> okay. So I like to get a nice heaping spoonful onto the dish. Given the size of the rice, what I'll do is I'll flatten it out. Why? Because. See how it's flattened a bit? Ooh, look at that. Really juicy, juicy chicken. Now, all that juice is going to come down into the rice, adding even more flavor to it. But wait. But wait, that's hot. <laughs> I want to show you guys this cider glaze. Let's see how it thickened. So it's it's a little stickier now. So what I'm going to do with that? I'm going to take a brush. I use a silicone brush, not tradi not the traditional, like kind of hair hair bristle brush and then I'm just going to brush the top. That's why I wanted it to be thick and not like a sauce. I wanted it to be more of a glaze. Let's get a nice center shot on this without tipping over the dish. Yeah, and again, it took less than an hour to make, all in all. But yeah, let's cut into it. You guys really should see how, it, how this thing goes. I'm going to bring down the camera a bit. Okay. Hmm. Well, that's the other thing. I bought bone-in um, chicken legs. Look at that. Cooked thoroughly. Oh shoot, he can't see. <laughs> Man. So, um, for those deciding whether to buy boneless or bone-in chicken, just know that um, depending on your cooking method, the bone um, adds as, as a kind of a insulator for the heat so um, it helps to keep the, the center of the meat or not the center of the meat but where the meat is around the bone um, a little cooler so um, it retains a bit uh, better on the moisture end but again it depends on how you're cooking it let's taste it Oh, that is flavorful. I mean, um, the chicken already packs like um, the, a punch from the seasoning um, with the cardamom, salt, and pepper. But having that um, apple cider glaze adds a whole new depth to, um, to the dish.
couple of the fact that because I cut the chicken on top of the rice, right? All the rice that's beneath the chicken. Just got injected with a whole new set of flavors. Right? So this dish is a win for me. And um, one day, hopefully I can make, you know, this dish for you all in person.